Okay, today we're doing a transmission service on a Grand Cherokee Jeep 2015 turbo diesel and it's got the 8 speed ZF transmission in it, the 8 HP 45. It's only done 95,000 kilometres so it shouldn't have too much wrong with it. Uh, so start off with taking these little stone guards off. We've got a plastic pan on these ones. And if you have a look, you got this cross member that crosses right the front bolts there, or right below. So quite difficult to get to. What you can do is raise the back of the transmission and that'll give you a little bit more room in the front here. So a good idea to just give the pan a good clean before you take it off and also if you're going to reuse the pan um, just make sure you let the transmission cool right down otherwise the plastic pans will distort. These two bolts on the cross member there and now if you have a look, have a look over here I'll just jack this up on the transfer case there. see it's given us a little bit more room there so we can access those bolts. Another good thing is to just drain the oil out of this it'll cool down a lot quicker and I'll just put a block of wood in there. So what I'm going to do first is take those front ones off because they're the hardest to get to. All those bolts are T40s. The oil looks pretty clean in it and these take a special transmission fluid. So you want to make sure you get either the Lifeguard 8 or the ZF fluid or a oil that is suitable or compatible with the Lifeguard 8. Now I've just taken those front four bolts off and my advice would be if you can't get those four bolts off first don't even uh, attempt the job. They are a little bit difficult to get to and sometimes you can actually even damage damage the little hex on the uh, Torx head on there. We've got the pan off there, you can see all the solenoids where they're located. You've got the mechatronic unit that's on top of the valve body. Um, if you're ever needing to replace the solenoids and you need to remove the valve body, make sure you pull that, there's a little sleeve there, a connector sleeve, that needs to come out first before you can actually uh, lower that valve body. We've got the pan off, and you can see the magnets there, and on the side there, I have got a little bit of muck there, so you can't just change the oil on these, you need to actually remove the pan and you can see on the box it also says to make sure you use the Lifeguard 8 or a suitable contap uh, compatible fluid. Make sure you do a comparison there. You want to make sure that the shape of the pan's the same. There are a few different um, variations of these. They have like a little leg on one end of the pan. So you want to make sure you've got the same one. And also if you have a look on the new one here, there are little bolts there, so you probably could, if you could get a filter for it, just change that filter. Instead of changing the whole, the whole pan and everything. Plastic off. And another thing to make sure is there is that little O-ring. If the O-ring's not there, you're going to have trouble. It's going to be sucking air there. And you can see these ones, they've only got the magnets up one end, they haven't got them on the side, so you could add a magnet if you, if you choose to. Before you put the pan on, you want to make sure that you clean this pan rail of any road dirt. When the seal sits on there, if there's any road dirt, it's not going to sit flush. And be very careful you don't, if you're using a scraper, uh, be very careful you don't damage that surface as well. 
when you're putting the, uh, the filter back in, they do have a nice large chamfer there, but you still need to line it up. And you'll see that the seal is quite, quite thick on these. So you want to make sure it's pushing up into the right spot. Um, and another thing you do is put a little bit of oil on that seal before you put it up. There you go, and I've got the pan on. And it's a good idea before you tighten anything to put all the bolts in, especially these front ones here. They are difficult to get to and you don't want it to be um, rubbing on the side of the pan when you're putting it up. So it's a good idea to get them all done up, but just leave them loose and then we can tighten it right up. Okay, I've got those front bolts in and you will actually need an array of tools and different lengths for your sockets to actually gain access to those. Um, good idea to also get some some of these. They're like an Allen key with a Torx bit on it and they come in different sizes. They have different lengths. You've got short, medium and long. But you will have a little bit of fun putting those bolts back in and tightening them up. Now you will notice if you get the, uh, the pan on these, it'll actually say, yeah, if I can get it to focus, to check it between 40 and 50 degrees. And the original pan will say 30 to 50 degrees. So the reason why they do that, or they've updated that information, is that you want to get the oil expanded uh, it'll expand a lot more over over 30 to 50 degrees than it will from 40 to 50 degrees. So you'll get a more accurate reading. When you find these sort of figures, I always like to go sort of midpoint. So if you can get it to about 45 degrees, check the fluid level, you'll be right. The filler plug on these is just here. And the idea is to put a bit of oil in there, um, start the vehicle up then top it up again because um, the, the pump will suck the fluid through and then you don't the idea is to not run the pump dry the initial bit will have to pump and circulate through the transmission and then you can top it up and keep the motor running while you check the fluid level and the idea is to get it between 40 and 50 degrees or 45 ideally and it should be just weeping out of that plug there and these are an 8mm Allen key. We just take that plug off. Make sure you clean around it, blow air around it a um, couple of times, even when you loosen it, because you'll get a little bit of road dirt stuck un underneath that step there. And now we're going to fill it. I have got another video, if you care to check it out on uh, doing a service on one of these, it might have a little bit uh, different information or more information, so check that out. I'll leave it in the, uh, in the information under the video. I'm just going to pump the fluid in till it just starts coming out and then I can start the vehicle up momentarily, turn it off and then top it up again till it just starts coming out and then I can keep the motor running and just fill it until it gets to that right temperature. There's a couple of litres went into it. And now we just start it for a moment. And turn it off. And another couple of litres have gone in. Now I'm going to go and start it up and you can keep the motor running now. Select all the gears. Hand, hand brake or foot brake on. Back in the park, and now we'll just top it up to that temperature. And we're on about well, 40, 44 
45 degrees. And you want it just weeping out of there, just a tiny bit. And put the plug back in. The wedge, don't forget to take the wedge out, put the bolts back in the cross member, blow out any oil, just double check everything that you've taken off or put on. You need to put the stone guard back on. Job's done. Anyway, hope that's helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you for watching.